It's a nine-bed um, acute aged care facility, a uh, state government um, funded for St Vincent's Hospital, so there's a public sector aged care project, uh, one of the first in many years since uh, the state government stopped funding them. Um, and importantly, it's to um, cater for a, a group of people in their end of life um, place, so these are hospitals. It's located at St. Vincent's Hospital in Kew, and what we thought about when we started the project uh, was the idea of trying to mediate between the scale of the institution and the scale of the residential properties that surround it. It's um, on a very acutely slope site, uh, which had a boiler house on it and um, uh, asbestos, um, toxic, diesel tanks, etc. So we remained at the site. But we also inherited in the St. Vincent's Master Plan 109 cars that had to be planned on the site. Leaving this site for a poor future development as well as a car park. So, this had to not only take 90 bedrooms, uh, or the sort functions, but also 190 cars, which is rather tricky. So, our strategy was to remediate the site and to bury the cars as much as possible, where we really wanted to create a landscape that worked for the, um, the residents. Um, so, I guess mediating that idea of the scale between the institution, the hospital, and the residential and residential lands. We tried to plan the facility um, to, I guess, respond significantly to the scale of those adjacent buildings um, as best as we could within that institution framework. And I guess we also tried to provoke that sense of scale, whether um, it's a three story building. And you can see in this conception of the idea of trying to, I guess, um, make the cars into the take the cars into the ground so they're effectively very little at the surface of the, um, of the facility, uh, at least at the level of experience of uh, has cars to keep involved in. And of course then the idea, the key idea of trying to create a series of um, significant landscapes for the residents that respond very much to the uh, sense of scale of the residential landscapes adjacent. So again that idea of bringing the cars lower into the site um, through that remediated land uh, and creating uh, significant landscapes at the resident level from the one, two, three above uh, with the entry occasionally entering by a car uh, at this level uh, to the reception. And so importantly that led us to be able to create um, I guess um, landscapes of the site um, for the residents to use, of course with the dementia patients that need to paint like all the time around the gardens, um, uh, but also create spaces for private reflection. I guess we also started thinking about the scale of the building uh, in terms of obviously three stories is not a small building and try and kind of bring that uh, attention from the scale through the brickwork and individual uh, windows uh, around the site to create that sense of home and home um, from the area. Well, and again, this conceptual section really showed that idea of kind of um, getting enough soil depth to go see the trees and creating the bedrooms of uh, the residents. Uh, So moving in now to the residential suites, um, I guess what our intention was here was really to create a, a place that felt like home. Um, and as Neil alluded to before, um, this is quite high acuity care, so for many of these patients, um, this will be their final stay. And with that in mind, um, we wanted to embed place and character into the individual rooms, um, and that's come through in the way of the um, custom future rails. Uh, the bay windows become a shelf for plants or family portraits, um, and the open joinery units um, become moments of celebration with the individual objects. Um, but this sort of goes beyond the, um, beyond the visual aesthetic uh, and for patients who are suffering, for residents who are suffering from um, dementia, these um, personalised elements become vital memory prompts as they traverse the building. So um, looking now through to the plans, um, our sort of central goal was to create a room with a view uh, within a residential household pod, each with their own distinct views. These residential pods are then connected by um, large open corridors, um, which we'll have a look at now. 
um, the sort of central framework around designing these corridors was um, intuitive wayfinding way through the use of colours um, with, uh, to help residents along their way. Um, we use warm timber throughout the whole project um, to tie all these together. Um, and the flood floor to ceiling windows at the end of the corridors offer a continuation sight line of the corridor, but also a moment to sit and reflect. Um, so supporting these household pods is the nodes of shared activity, um, and these are for communal living, but also relaxation. Um, our idea uh, behind these spaces was uh, to create the feeling as though you were at home. Um, and what we've attempted to do here is using joinery and furniture to partition the spaces into separate zones. Um, so on the left hand side, um, a, a moment of a more calming living room space, um, while on the right there's a um, shared, um, shared meal time area which it encourages interaction and engagement. Um, so at the centre of the building is the staff and um, back, of house, uh, circula uh, um, back of house service core um, as well as the circu circulation for the building. Um, our sort of clinical planning idea here um, was to de-emphasise the relationship between the service core of the building uh, and the household pods. Um, and what that sort of led to is um, active, open, wide, um, uh, sunlit corridors um, with moments to sit um, and enjoy the St Vincent's Indigenous artwork collection. Um, and if the residents are up to it, to use the um, sun-filled stair core that um, circulates the building vertically. Um, supporting these spaces is also the um, shared uh, activity rooms um, for more organised activity to exist within across across the entire day. Um, so tying all of these components together are the bridge links, um, which are passively ventilated um, openings. Uh, and I guess going back to your diagram, and stuff, yeah. these really um, these really represent the sort of spaces in between the houses in our urban framework. Um, so at a high level, they become moments of um, informal activity, like we've got. Uh, Mike, ex Fitzroy player, taking his weekly boxing class. Um, but on the ground floor, these then spill back out into the landscape and um, invite you to enjoy and open up into the landscape uh, as you traverse through the building. So uh, at, its, at its core, this project seeks um, to create a, a balance of uh, clinical practicality um, with a domestic familiarity through a move away from the institutional fabric and towards uh, place.